Hey, well, what do you know? What do you know? Hello, friends and family. And welcome to another edition of Live Ish at Five Ish with Pastor Lauren. You know, I guess if you boil it all down, all you really need in this world is a shady spot, a Wi Fi signal, and a little bit of water. Along with the living water and the living bread. And all is good. Life is good. And a way to get away from the uh, pterodactyl sized horse flies around here, around the country. I mean, those things are huge. You can take your hat off. Humongous. <laughs> Whew. I got out of the car, one landed on me, and got right back in. Like, man, could not have never kind of hit me in the head sideways my head went like that just a little <laughs> of course I was getting out of the way but the thing was you know it was it was huge and things are massive they're like like half dollar bills well I hope we don't have an invasion of those things pterodactyl size horse flies this thing is well okay I'm exaggerating a little bit but they're big that's the point they're just big hey welcome welcome guys thanks for joining me today and I'm hoping that today is finding you a well and alive and full of faith. And I um, hope this thing works, too. Like I said, all you need is a um, signal, a good signal. It must be kind of good or else it's get the ball too. That's a funny Today. Day to you, happy birthday to you, and do yourself a favor and accept that free gift that God has given each and every person. You don't have to wait till your birthday to do it. You should go to get your get your birthday gift early or late, however you want to see that. And as you go along, well, that's all going to come along well. So I just want to say thank you for joining me, guys. Uh, I appreciate your time. And here we are at another episode. Hey, Michelle, good to see you. With another episode of Live at Five-ish here and jumping into Acts chapter 9. Chapter 9. And avoiding all of the pterodactyl size horse lines. Yes, it's a, it's a good idea. That as much as possible. All right, let's jump right into this thing. Y'all ready? Here we go. And it says, Now Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest. Now remember Saul, we were talking about Friday. He was the one that, uh, the Saul of Tarsus. He was the one that was zealot for the Orthodox Jews of that day and, and those that were uh, persecuting Christ, all Christians. Oh, no, i got one of them in here. Boy, that thing is huge. Or, can I get him out of here? <laughs> I hope he don't, don't my neck start doing some kind of vampire thing or something. <laughs> Boy, those things are big. I'm going to have a fit. <laughs> oh, now I've lost my spot. And as for letters, let's see, let's start over. Now Saul was the murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest, and asked for letters from him to the uh, from him, and asked for letters from him to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he had found any belonging to the way there, that both men and women he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Boy, I, I mean he's on his way to, to make a mess of things. And as he was traveling, it happened that he was approaching Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. And he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul. Yeah! <laughs> See, he found me. Now we're going to have to get him. Thank you, Jesus. Whew! Did you see that? <laughs> Man! I'm all right. I'm good. Let me, let me check Alright, I still have a call from good. Okay, no fear. <laughs> Whew. Mercy. Now Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? <laughs> and he said, Who are you, Lord? And 
and enter the city, and it will be told you what you must do. And the men who traveled with him stood speechless, hearing the voice, but seeing no one. Now that's interesting. They heard the voice, but didn't see a thing, but Saul sees this bright light that just blinds him, literally. And Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. And leading him by the hand, they brought him into the mountains. And he was three days without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Here I am, Lord. And the Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and inquire at the house of Judas for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. He has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. Isn't that interesting? I love that. What in, here he is seeing the vision. And here he is uh, down praying and as he's praying. Why was it that Ananias had to be told about him? seeing it happen in the And an ice this, and here he is, you know, and he's like, why? Uh, what should I do, Lord? And he's saying, go and, and be with you. Let's read just a little bit longer, and we're going to see how this works out. This is great. I love it. It says, get up and go to the street called Straight, and inquire at the house of Judas for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying, he's praying. Yeah. And then, as he has seen in a vision, a man lay his hands on him, so that he might. But Ananias answered and said, Lord, I things about this. how much harm he did to your saints at Jerusalem. And here and he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who come on your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he has chosen an instrument of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the sons of Israel. For I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. And entered the house, and after laying his hands on him, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you, on the road by which you were coming. He sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales. And he regained his sight, and he got up and was baptized. And he took food and was strengthened. Now here he comes. Here comes in the night. And he's dealing with his own fear and, and the situation in that, you know. And because he knows... Saul has been, been guilty of, of killing a lot of the believers. And after the Lord tells him, though, confirms to him and comforts him, tells him, no, don't worry about it. It's a chosen instrument of mine. <laughs> uh, boy, that wouldn't be fair, would it? This old burn guy. Now he's going to be a chosen instrument of the Lord. Well, okay. So anyway, the Lord knows best, so we got to trust that, right? So here he comes. And he goes to lay hands on him, and he prays. And then, from the prayer of faith, the scales fall off of Saul's life. Now, he gets a new name after this. You know, we know him as Paul, the apostle. And as come to pass, it had to come to pass that the prayer of faith and the laying on of hands needed to be done in this situation, this particular situation. And we know, too, that there's no distance in prayer, but this particular situation required it. And it went according to the vision that Paul had, or that Saul had had at the time as he's praying. Well, this is an interesting thing. God does all things um, decently. And he does all things according to a process. And that process that he has said, you know, for whatever reason. Now, for several days, he was with the disciples who were at Damascus. 
And immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. And all those hearing him continued to be amazed, and were saying, Is this not he who in Jerusalem destroyed those who called on this name, and who had um, come here for the purpose of bringing them bound before the chief priests? But Saul kept increasing in strength and confounding the Jews who lived at Damascus by um, proving that this Jesus is the Christ. And when many days had elapsed, the Jews plotted together to do away with it. Known to Saul, and they were also watching the gates, the, the gates day and night, so that they might be putting the death there. Just took him by night and let him down through an opening in the wall, lowering him in a large basket. And when he came to Jerusalem, he was trying to associate with the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took hold of him and brought him to the apostles and described him and how he had seen the Lord on the road and that he had talked to him and how at the Damascus he had spoken out boldly in the name of Jesus. And he was with them, moving about freely in Jerusalem, speaking out boldly in the name of the Lord. And he was talking and arguing with the Hellenistic Jews. <coughs> but they were attempting to put him to death. But when the brethren uh, learned of it, they, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him away to Tarsus. So the church drew out all their day and let Galilee and Samaria enjoyed peace and being built up and going on in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. It continued to increase. Praise the Lord. Is that not some good news? I think that's awesome news. I love that. And continue to increase. Father, I pray that you will increase in us now. Increase in us personally. And increase your kingdom all around us, wherever we are. Lord, protect each and every person here. And that's where you're opening your word. I pray your blessing, Father. That you will just open our heart and mind and ears right now. Lord, I thank you for every opportunity that we get to do, and even to just be able to stop right in the midst of as as we're reading, as you just bring inspiration. I'm just asking, I don't know, or something, maybe a dynamic change or something different happened, and you are determining, even right now, to just stop and pray. So according to your spirit, Lord, we just move forward, and we ask that you be in, and all that we do be blessed and glorified. Had to break away. Sometimes just gotta do it. Just gotta do it. And he was talking and arguing with the Hellenistic Jews, um, but they were attempting to put him to death. <laughs> you know, I've talked to some folks that didn't like me so much, <laughs> or was mad at me a little bit. <laughs> and I don't know if I've ever, I've ever talked to anybody that wanted to put me to death. I, I couldn't even imagine that. But when the brethren learned of it, it's not funny. I'm laughing. We, we don't even comprehend this, you know. We're sitting there reading. We just read right over it. And I'm going, this is, this is severe. <laughs> it's really severe. And we just like blah, 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 and read right over it, not even think about it. But I get thinking, you know, What's the closest I've ever been to that situation to kind of relate to it or try to understand it deeper? And the best I can do is just somebody say, I'll just kill you. <laughs> and you know, they don't mean it. But when there's people that really mean it and they're looking for a place to drag you to, to stone you to death, and here you are still talking to them and, and, and even debating with them, you know, oh, mercy. I'd be by the power of God. Man. So the church threw out all Judea and Galilee and Samaria enjoyed peace and being built up. Wait a minute, I lost my spot. Uh, now it's, oh well, I'll just stop right there. All Judea and Galilee and Samaria enjoyed peace being built up. In the fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it continued to increase. And we praise the Lord for increase. Now as Peter was traveling through all those regions, he came down also to the saints. And there he found a man named Amos, 
uh, who had been bedridden eight years, for he was paralyzed. heals you. Get up and make your bed. And immediately he got it. And all who lived and lived in Sharon saw him and they turned to the Lord. Now in Joppa there was a, a, a disciple named Tabitha who translated in Greek is called Borcus. And this woman was abounding with deeds of kindness and charity which she continually did. And it happened at that time that she fell sick and died. And when they had washed her body, they laid, laid her body up in an upper room. And since Lita was near Joppa, uh, the disciples, having heard that Peter was there, sent two men to him, imploring him, Do not delay in coming to us. So Peter arose and went with them. And when he arrived, they brought him into the upper room. And all the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing all the tunics and garments that Dorcas used to make while she was with him. But Peter sent them all out and knelt down and prayed, and turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes and went and sat up. Well, praise the Lord. That's amazing. And it's just so incredible. You know, we hear stories of that. Even the power of God working like that, even today. But Peter sent them all out and nailed them down, because there were many that could have, you know, he sent them out, for one, because it's not something that was to glorify himself, and we're not to ever, you know, if anything, that we're, all the work that we're doing in the power of God is never to glorify ourselves, it glorifies him. None of us, I was just talking about last night, none of us have the power to heal in that, you know, but if healing comes by the power of God. And we can stand up knowing and we lay hands in faith. He says, Whomsoever you lay those who lay your hands on, they shall recover. And lay your hands on the sick and they'll recover. And then the blind will see, the deaf hear, the dead shall be raised. Even still these things happening today. Absolutely. So Peter arose and went with them and when he arrived they brought him to the all the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing all the tunics and garments that Dorcas used. Was with them, them out, and he got rid of them out to, to They were convinced nothing else that could happen, and they were already um, sold to the fact that she was gone. So he said, let everybody go out. And here he is, if he's trying to pray the prayer of faith and you've got all that doubt around you, you've got to wade through that doubt. It's like walk, trying to walk through quicksand. And he's knowing that. And he followed the, the direction of Jesus when Jesus sent everybody out and all those who were doubting. And he knelt down and prayed. So he's showing us by the power of God, not by his. And turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand, and he raised her up. And calling the saints and widows, he presented her alive. <laughs> Amen. That it became known over all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. And Peter stayed many days in Joppa <laughs> with a tanner named Simon. Amen. This is getting pretty good. You know, the more we we walk through Acts, the more of the Acts that we see the disciples doing and all the things that they're able to do in faith, we got to remember we're reading this to help build your faith, to help encourage you in, in the walk that you're going and, and to um, help you get out there. But in knowing and understanding that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So what he did with the disciples then, he'd do today, and he's still doing it. For those who can believe it, if we'll only believe it, says the Lord, amen. Well, and whatsoever you believe, ask him, you shall receive it. If you don't doubt, we should never doubt it. Don't be like a wave tossed this way or that way, right? What we see in James. Well, there we go. And now that leads us in chapter 
And I thank you today and we're keeping the promises, keeping everything short, sweet, and simple, and to the point. And uh, I'm glad you guys do. When you all leave the comments there and the likes and the hearts and and uh, the funny faces or whatever, or you know, I don't know, leave a leave a neat joke that I might be able to share one day at the, on the pulpit. Make sure it's nice and clean and, and good. <laughs> uh, I don't know how that could go. I might be I might be a little on the edge saying leave something there, you know, but that's all right. Yeah, I love you all. You guys have a good day. God bless you. And remember, above all else, love each other and trust in Jesus. We'll see you later.